Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Armor Cat. How many? How many? I'm gonna buy. I'm currently not gonna buy any Armor Cat. I'm going to sit out this set until cards get way cheaper, which they will. And I'm only gonna buy singles. I typically never buy only singles. I normally get a case at least of a new set and then open it and then draft with it with friends at the casual kitchen table. I do need to get a better kitchen table. We currently use the dining room table. But that's another issue. One of my friends spilled his uh, bear. Um, so that's why I probably need to get a kitchen table. So anyway, I want to tell you why I'm not buying as much or any on my cat. So one of the reasons is I've lost trust in Wizards of the Coast. Because they are unpredictable. They will say something and then two days later do something else. What you have to know here is the banning restriction list has always been an announcement every two to three months. Now it is an announcement every one and a half months. So we have twice as many banned restrictions announcements as we did before. And this has caused the ability for them to ban more cards at a faster rate. So January 9th, then March 13th, then April 24th, and then later, two days later, April 26th. If you were going to just do emergency bans anyway, then just say, hey, we don't have a ban and restriction announcement time. Or if we do have a time, we will let you know and it will be once every three months. Now it's much faster. We have twice as many ban and restriction announcements. The problem still exists that they are using emergency bans. So what is the point of having set times to announce when you don't ban the cards in those set times, instead you do emergency bans. Now you might say, oh, this is a unique case, but this is a very unique case. Emergency bans, the last one I can remember is Memory Jar. Since that time, there has not been any. And so it's a big deal. Oh, Memory Jar and maybe JST Mind Sculptor. I don't remember if he was an emergency ban or if he was just a regular ban. However, why would you have? Why would you announce you're going to ban more ban cards more regularly and not ban them during the times that you said that you would, and just use an emergency ban? Because you could just be like, "Oh, we're going to do emergency bans." Loss of confidence. So the second unpredictable element. I mean, internal masters. I'll talk a little briefly about that. Was totally unpredictable. As someone who buys boxes, not to the extent of other YouTubers, but just for my own personal collection, I was shocked. I didn't buy that much Eternal Masters, but if I did, I would have been really upset because it was supposed to be limited, it was not limited, and now it's a 180, still 180 a box online for Eternal Masters, and there's very little interest. And if you ask your local store, they will offset Eternal Masters for quite cheap. Now, let me go back to the main my main argument here is they are unpredictable. They will announce something and then change their mind. It reminds me of the when they ban they removed modern as a pro tour format. People got really upset. Then two days later, they put it back. It's like who's doing your management because you're gonna you are gonna upset the maximum amount of people doing that, right? If you are gonna announce you have two ban and restriction list or every month and a half, you're gonna make an announcement pretty much, then why wouldn't you ban the card during one of those times? You've actually created an additional announcement time just for that purpose. But instead you use an emergency ban, which really does not inspire confidence because at any time they can ban any card. That's what an emergency, emergency ban is. If they believe the card is too strong, it's gone. Now that gets me to the other unpredictable issue. A long time ago, or not a long time ago, it seems like a long time ago, in 2015, they removed the core set because they felt like players were not really happy with core sets. I personally love core sets. Core sets are a great way to reprint cards that now we have in master sets or conspiracy sets. Like, you know, what would be the difference between a core set with good reprints and conspiracy? Maybe, I mean, Yes, the core set is in standard, but typically the core sets are not that strong when compared to the new cards. So they determined from asking R&D to you know, destroy core sets. And then they also dis determined at this time 
to do a interesting one two one two one two block. Right now we are not in the one two one two one two block. We are in the one two one two one two one two block. So Gideon Alive Zen Car, which was never supposed to be around during the Gideon of Trials, is around, and it's because of this mistake they made. So let me iterate what's going on. We have Battle for Zendikar, we have uh, Oath of the Gatewatch, we have Eldritch Moon, Shadows of Innistrad, Kaladas, Aether Revolt, and now Amaket, all in one standard. Wow, that is seven big sets, or seven non-core sets in one standard. Even under the old model, that was never going to happen, because rotation happens after six core sets. At most, you have six core sets in a standard. Now we have seven, we will get eight. That's why the format is so stale. It's because these cards are not supposed to exist with one another. Uh, Gideon Ally of Zen card, when you combine it with the new Gideon, I think it's a very strong deck, but those two cards were never supposed to meet together. So why the change in heart? It's because they wanted to sell more product, as you can see from this image. They got rid of the core set and they added the, they went from one, two, three core to one, two, one, two. And if they kept that, they never even gave it a chance. They came up with this great concept or their, in their opinion, great concept. And they never gave it a chance. They just kind of unpredict, they made the announcement. You can read the article. And then just out of the blue, they decided this is not the way they're going to go. But instead of reverting to something that Magic players are comfortable with, which is the one, two, three core set, they did the one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, which is kind of ridiculous because that means you have the newer cards have to be so much stronger. Remember, core sets are very weak sets in general. They, I mean, yes, you have Jace Finn's Prodigy, you have Hanger Backwalker. But the large majority of cards are reprints, and therefore you know what their power level is, and you can be concerned or not concerned, since you already know what they are. And theoretically, you play tested them already. So now we are under this new format, this hybrid, if you will, of what we used to have, which was amazing. The last time we had something in Concha Tarkir was the last great block, in my opinion. Uh, since then, we have been doing gimmicks and just... Overall, it's not great. This was the original plan. I don't know why they deter they had to kill the original plan without even testing it. Maybe it was a terrible plan. Maybe it was not a terrible plan. But how did they know? Is because these players who never experienced it complain about it. Remember, the whole idea was standard would not be stale. That this would get make standard more exciting. There would be more rotations. My card prices would be cheaper, which they accomplished. So the reason I criticized it in the beginning was because I thought we're going to lose more value in the cards. But that's not true if you put all the value in an eternal playable card like the, or at least an EDH casual card like the masterpieces. Then rotation is much better because you don't have much value in these sets anyway. When you're set, when you have a one hundred dollar Jace Finn's Prodigy and rotation is a lot faster, it sucks. But when your most expensive card in the whole set, minus masterpieces, which will hold value, is Liliana at thirty five dollars, that's okay because yes, you will lose value and she's modern playable. So the be better example would be a card that is like ten dollars, um, and will go down in price. So those are my arguments. You know, I, I don't know how Wizards of the Coast can fix it. I feel like go back to one, two, three core set. And then if you're going to make the banner, go back to the old banner restriction list where you make an announcement every uh, two, three months. And then also say, oh, and occasionally we will make emergency bans. Do what you set. What The problem is they tell people they're going to do this. Then they do something totally different. But they don't go back to the old way of doing it. So for banning restrictions, they tell people we're going to have twice as many announcements, twice as many opportunities. Then they don't use opportunities. They go to emergency ban. So why don't we just go to the old way, which is one announcement and emergency bans whenever? No, we didn't do that. So it's very unpredictable. And then this Eternal Masters has always been one print run. So when or the Master Series, so everyone expected Eternal Masters to be one print run, then they did two. That's unpredictable. 
But the biggest unpredictability is why Standard sucks now. It's because they flip-flopped. They said, okay, well, we are going to slowly rotate. And I guarantee you these sets are designed to rotate in that way. The Gideon Trials is not supposed to be paired with Gideon Ally. Because they, then they decided, nope, we're going to uh, do something different. But they never went back to what worked. So it's like, you know A works. You didn't try B. You just decided to do a hybrid of the two. Which is a worst case scenario because you didn't tell people what you were going to do. And you were completely unpredictable. Wizard of Coast right now is really unpredictable. Like, yeah, you cannot tell. I, you know, it, it's... They did stuff. They made this article to tell people what was going to happen. And then people got adjusted to what was happening. Then they decided to, no, we're not going to do this. And we're not going to go back to the old model. And we're, we're going to go to this new model. And now they're talking about having core sets back again. It's like, why did they ever go? Like, who, who didn't want a core set? Core sets sell in the summer. And summer sets do terrible. You want a main set to sell terribly in the summer? Like, no, that's when you have a core set. And core sets are amazing, and I do like them. And it's a good place for reprints to really kill the price of reprints. Anyway, those are my opinions. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.